Relieved gimmick. Oh my god. I just showed up with a t-shirt. The opportunity is coming and the opportunity never came. What ring name are you going to use now? Tai Kongsi. I will keep it. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I feel like my heart that I was born to represent my country and to represent my people. Welcome everyone to Ring the Bell. This is DS and today, Papi, Latinas do it better. Latinas. Do it better. We're here with Tanara Conti. Hi. Yay. How's quarantine treating you? Uh, well, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna talk about your journey through WWE. I'm super, super excited. But before we go into WWE time, let's start a little before that because your background is so interesting. You're a judo black belt. You're a state champion. I'm in the sports. Since I was seven years old. Oh my so, god. Yeah, 2016, I was trying to go for the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. That was like my biggest dream. I was a professional athlete, even like I got scholarship and everything all through judo. Wow. So that was my life pretty much. And I lost the last tryout mm -hmm. for the Olympic Games 2016. And guess what? In the same kind of the same time, my boyfriend left me. So. Oh, <laughs> the worst. Yeah, right? And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? I, yeah. I have nothing anymore. So that was like a bad moment. And then I met a guy. He's from France in McDonald's. So I was eating. And then he was like, hey, you're so beautiful. Let's do pictures. I'm a photographer. And I was like, what the heck? I don't know you. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm upset. I don't want to talk with anyone. Like, just don't. And then he was like, no, I'm not trying to hit on you or anything. I'm really a photographer. Oh. And he was trying so hard. And I was like, okay, give me a card. Then go away. So he gave me his card. I went home and then a couple, like, a week later, I found the card. And I was like, oh, what if? You know, mm -hmm. let me check it out. And I found out he was a photographer for real. He had so many cool pictures of like um, Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, something's going on here. So I contacted him. I'm like, hey, I know it was a kind of rude. I'm sorry, but can we do the pictures? Yes. <laughs> I was like, what if we do a, a photo shoot? in a kimono. Kimono is what we use like for judo, right? Oh yeah. And then he was like, let's do a sex one. Mm. And of course, I want to do to piss uh, my boyfriend. I was like, <laughs> I want him to be pissed at me, you know? And my mom was like, well, you pay your bills, you live by yourself, <laughs> Just be ready because, you know, it's internet. People are going to talk. He posted pictures on his Instagram. He was from France, so he had a lot of followers. WWE found my pictures. Oh, wow. They were looking for Brazilian talent. They figured out that was, um, I was just not a model, you know? I had the real uh, background mm -hmm. in martial arts. Someone contacted my friend and he was like, hey, here it is. You have an opportunity. And at first I was like, no. I don't have any idea, you know, yeah. about WWE. I don't even know what that means, like, to be honest, to mm -hmm. be completely honest. I thought there was something with, like, prostitution. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you didn't watch wrestling before this? No. Never. I had wow. no idea what pro wrestling was before. Wow, wow, wow. So I started to look on the internet, right? And I found out they had Brazilians here. I knew one of the guys. His family has a, like a good name there. And I was like, well, I'm going to contact him. And he was like, no, it's a great opportunity oh. and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, so let's do it. And I came for the tryout. And the first day of my tryout, they told me they would sign me. Wow. And Cesar, the other Brazilian, he was like with me in the tryout and he was translating and everything. And was like, whoa, cool. But I had no idea, you know, feeling was amazing because, yeah, I want to get signed just because I'm here. <laughs> you know, I think it took like eight months to get ready, all the documents, visa. And oh, everything. yeah. From there to competing in the first ever Mae Young Classic. At that point, how much of a training did you have? Not much. Mm. Because I remember, I had no idea what I was doing in Mae Young Classic. <laughs> Oh my god. There's like tons of people with like years and years of independent wrestling experience coming in. Like, did you feel kind of intimidation? No, because 
<laughs> I was not aware of anything, you know. I didn't know wrestling. I spoke no English. Mm -hmm. I was like, it feels like judo for me. Pretty good. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You obviously stood out in the bunch because you came in with your kimono and then you're like, you know, like you, uh, you're very different. So how did your judo background affect your growth as a wrestler? To be honest with you, like I feel my mindset is really, um, really good because of judo. In judo, you need to be like really respectful, training hard. It's everything like about mindset and discipline. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the most important thing for me because everything else I was able to figure it out My body was used to fight like to learn to learn quick and to pick up the moves and everything The most hard thing for me was like English <laughs> Being an ESL English as second language. How did that affect your training and growth as a wrestler in the performance center? I think it motivated me more because like mm -hmm. as I told you in the ring was not a problem even like for the communications in the matches after I understood better I was like okay body language <laughs> I yeah. don't need to talk much you know but for promos that was kind of a problem mm -hmm. I was doing like promos in Portuguese at first and then everyone liked it. Everyone was like, oh my God, you show like so many emotions, your face ex expression. Oh yeah. And I was like, well, now I need to do that in English. And they mm -hmm. were like, you don't need to worry about that right now. Like just try to understand, but I'm like, no, I'm going to do it in English. You know, I was trying to push myself and that helped a lot. Promo okay. was like, helped me a lot because it forced me to learn. Fast. And I was like memorizing and I was like, all that was always stressful. Promo for me <laughs> at first was always stressful yeah. because of English. It motivated me and I was like, okay, now I can do it. Let's do it. So I felt in love with promos. So I never had the chance to do one on TV, but like mm -hmm. feedback was always like really good. I mean, you always had such a great facial expression. Your charisma was oozing. So we never felt like that was an issue either. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in NXT, there were a couple other women, international background. Did WWE like teach you English? Or was there like an English class? Yeah. Oh. They, yeah, they pay like um, a teacher for us and I had classes like twice a week. Going back to wrestling again, people coming in from independent wrestling background, how did they treat you because you didn't have any wrestling experience before? At first, I felt like, oh, they may like not like me or whatever, but honestly, mm, I didn't have any like big problems with that. I have a lot of good friends that mm -hmm. came from pro wrestling background yeah. and they got signed and like Dakota Kai, I love her like so much. She teaches me like so many things. Candice, Candice one of the best persons like in the ring that I know. Mm -hmm. Just watching her, I learned so much. It's amazing like how people came from the Indies and I was able like learn from them, you know. This is kind of an awkward question. It's Americans <laughs> issue but it's about your name, uh, Tainara Conti. <laughs> and I think I have some credential to ask you this because my legal name is Dong Suk. So like people, <laughs> people make jokes about it all the time. So how did you get your ring name Tainara Conti? And like, what do you think about being a butt of a joke sometimes? I don't care. I'm the kind of person that like, you need to do like so much to, to really affect me, you know? Okay. People need to have fun. If they're having fun, whatever. <laughs> it's funny because um, Conte is my husband's last name. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, my husband is half Italian. Conte is Italian name. And then when I got married, I didn't change my name. I was like, well, why not? Because Tainara is my legal name. Mm -hmm. Let's try to put your last name so it's gonna work perfect. And they were like, okay, let's do it. But then I think that they found out all the jokes or whatever, <laughs> okay. and they changed it. They they took out County. Oh, they like, did Tainara. change it. Oh. Yeah, they did. Tainara! Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's very yeah. interesting. What ring name are you gonna use now? I'm gonna use Thai County. Tai Conti. Okay, so keep it. Yeah, we're pushing it. I will keep it. I yeah. don't care. <laughs> yes, I love it. Let's talk about your television debut on NXT. And you came in with the Undisputed Era. And there was the whole storyline that was kind of teasing that you might be joining them. What is the backstory of that? That was never meant to be. Oh. So, yeah. Everyone I was asking, I was like, no, that was a kind of surprise because I was like watching them to put the matches together, all the segments. 
And of course, I had no idea by them like about anything. I remember they were like, hey, Tainara, do you have gear? You have your gear here? And I was like, yes. I also have my gear, no matter what. <laughs> and then they're like, well, we may use you for something. And I was like, yes, you know. And then they was like, oh, no, sorry. We are not using you anymore. I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's pretty much how everything works, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, yeah, we are using you. Go go to do your makeup and hair. They used me for this segment or from the spirit area. But that was it. They uh, had no plans. There was not not like a plan or storyline. No. Of course, after I tried to, to do something with them, I was like pitching ideas and like, hey, what if? What if we came back if we come back with this storyline and then we put some girl within the spirit area? It's gonna be cool and I was trying to put ideas that But you made a huge appearance at WrestleMania 34 yeah. when you competed in the Battle Royale match, becoming the first Brazilian ever to compete yeah. in WrestleMania. How was that experience? Crazy. <laughs> like I was not supposed to go to WrestleMania. Not even to wrestle uh, in the access. It's always cool to be in WrestleMania. You learn a lot, you know, all the experience, all the feelings. It's it's always amazing, right? They gave us like the email. They they sent us an email with the names, and I was not there. Oh, okay. I was so upset, and I was crying like at home, like oh my god, I really want to be there, you know. <laughs> a week before WrestleMania, I got a call. Wow, last minute. A, a week or so. Yeah, a week or so. Or less. Hey Tay, you're gonna be um, going to WrestleMania, but you're gonna be there if someone gets hurt for access, you can wrestle. Mm. And I was like, well, okay. Just to be there and leave that, it's gonna be like good for me. I didn't have any time to make a new gear or, you know, make plans, nothing. I, I was just like someone that was there if someone else got hurt. And of course, it, it's kind of hard because you will never wish for someone else yeah. to get hurt, yeah. you know? But like at the same time, you really want to wrestle. So it's a kind of a trick feeling. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I, I better don't wrestle, you know? I don't mm -hmm. want to see people getting hurt. A day before WrestleMania, after TakeOver, we had a meeting. Triple H is saying like, hey guys, that was an awesome show and blah, blah, blah. Thank you. All the speech. Hey Naira and Peyton, Kavita. Come here. And I was shaking like, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? They put us in um, in another room. Mm -hmm. And they put the cameras on. And by then I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I think I know what's coming. And I was shaking like the guys from Brazil. They yeah. recorded. They were like recording my legs. I was oh. shaking like a lot. <laughs> and they were like, oh, you guys gonna be in the WrestleMania tomorrow? I'm like, wait, what? I was just <laughs> crying and like not able to understand like, Oh my god. And I called my my husband. I was like, you need to come. And he's like, hey, hey it's just so late. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you gotta be here. <laughs> yeah, you need to be here. So they helped me with that. Like talking with my husband, they figured out the flight. And my husband was there. Thank God. Yeah, that was like the most amazing feeling and experience. You know, like as I told you in the beginning, like to be in the Olympic Games was like my biggest dream, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the Olympic Games, you know? And I remember I was walking the ramp and I was like, Oh my God, I'm here. And then I was like, okay, I need to be in character, you know? Speaking of your character, you're mostly doing heel. Is that something you preferred or did you like doing face too? So when I started, like my first year was like all pink. I had my hair like this, oh. <laughs> you know? I really wanted to be like a babe face, look like a doll for the uh -huh. kids and whatever. That was like kind of my personality. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to do that. I love kids. Didn't work. Oh. I was like, I, I'm natural here, you know? <laughs> and I'm kind of mean in the ring, you know, just natural. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because of my background. It's lethal, it's deadly. It's just natural for me to be like mean and like bad, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> and I was I like, it. yeah, let's go heal. And you had another huge opportunity coming when you returned to Mae Young Classic, the second season of it. How did you feel different walking into the second Mae Young Classic? Well, yeah, that was completely different because by <laughs> then I was like, 
yes, now I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good, like really good because um, I had Jessie Kamea in mm -hmm. the first round. She had less experience than me. So that was kind of new for me to be uh, like the most experienced in the ring, you know. So, But that was really good. Uh, I feel like we have a good chemistry. Second round, I had Lacey Lane. I had never stepped in the ring with someone that I didn't know before. You oh. know? That was like a great experience for me because I didn't know her. I had no idea how she was in the ring and everything. I was like getting kind of nervous, but a good nervous, you know, like excited. It's like, wow, that's going to be like a great experience. I'm not having a match with someone from PC because she was not signed. And she speaks Spanish a little bit. She understands oh, yeah. Spanish a lot. <laughs> it's interesting that you lost to two Lacey's. Right? <laughs> I figured it out and I was like, Come on, guys. Maybe the third May Young don't put me with any lacy. Yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, around this time, people were comparing you a lot with Alexa Bliss. Did you hear that yeah. too? What's your thought on that? Yeah. Even in PC, people that work for WWE, they're like, oh my gosh, you remind me of Alexa when she got fine and everything. At first, I was like, I don't want that to be an issue. People think that I'm trying to be her mm. because that's not what I'm trying to do. But like, after i was like i'm okay with that because yeah. first she's amazing in the mic for me she's one of the best in the mic and i was like well if they're saying you know that i look like alexa i speak kind of like alexa face expressions and everything like well i'm i'm grateful for you know you yeah, guys can yeah. say it because Honestly, she was one of the person that I was looking at, trying to learn from everyone. And I was always watching her and, you know, learning from her. So I have to talk about one of my favorite catchphrases in WWE. Papi! Latinas yes. do it better. <laughs> Latinas do it better. Yes! I never talked about that. That's cool. I, I can't remember the match, but like, in one match, I was saying like, Are you crazy? And my guess, because of my accent, my face expression, everything sounds so funny. Are you crazy? The fans were like, oh, are you crazy? Are you crazy? All the time. And I was like, oh my God, I may use that now, you know, because <laughs> they liked it. Stop touching the tech. Oh my. <laughs> I always try to put that in my matches. It's like I need to find a moment to do it. One day I had a match on TV. Someone from the debris told me like, hey, Tay, we cannot say crazy in TV anymore. And I was like, oh no, that's kind of my thing now. And they were like, yeah, sorry, don't, don't say it. And I was like, oh my God, I need to come up with something else. And they were like, no, don't worry. I'm like, no, I need to co come up with something, right? And then I was uh, talking with Victoria, Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't know what to do. And I just started to do like the Latina gimmick. And I was like, and I was doing babe face at that point. And I was like, what if I try to include all the Latinas, you know, as a babe face? And she was helping me. I remember that I was like, what if Latina does it better? She was like, no, it's not does. It do, you know? <laughs> she was helping me a lot with English. That was all in the same day. And yeah, and I was like, well, I'll, I'm gonna try it. Let's see if it works. So I had a tag match and I was in the ring with Vanessa Bourne. I, I was pumping, pump, pump kicking her and I was like, Latina do it better. And boom. <laughs> Latina do it better, baby. And people react to it. I was like, well, I think it works. Latina do it better, baby. Ooh. And I started to use it. And after I turned heel again. And I was like, oh, my character is kind of like a badass. But at the same time, I'm sexy. Mm -hmm. Right? So I went to put something else. And I was like, oh, why not Poppy? Uh. <laughs> you know? Poppy. Let's talk about this February where all the wrestling news sites were saying Tanara Conti, NXT superstar, walked away from WWE. And there were a lot of speculations about why that happened. Tell us, what exactly happened? As I was telling my YouTube channel, like, I was not happy in a couple last months, right? Mm. Uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that WWE gave to me. Like, I will never forget that. It changed my whole life. I will be, like, forever grateful. But... At the same point, I need to get better. I need to think like about my future. I need to feel that I'm useful. So the last couple of months, I was not feeling that anymore. 
I was trying to have conversations, asking for opportunities, right? And don't take me wrong, I never asked for something big. Like, I never asked for a takeover match. Mm. I never asked for, like, uh, a title shot. No, because I know everything's, like, step by step. But I wasn't the same step for a long time, you know? I was doing, like, um, three-minute matches, four-minute matches to put someone else over. And I was not able to show everyone what I was able to do. I'm not asking for much. Like, give me a 10-minute match, like a 50 fit, you know? And then I can show, like, more about my character. I can show what I can do in the ring because a three-minute match... I can't do much. If the match is for someone else, I need to make them look good. At first, I was like, okay, that's my time to put people over. It's okay. I don't mind. But at some point, I was like, oh, I have been doing this for a long time. I think it's time to get better. It's time to, to show them more about me. Mm -hmm. I have never do like a promo. I, I was never in a storyline. And that was like kind of frustrating for me. I was like... Wow, you guys keep saying that I'm good, that I'll be a star, that all the, the feedback was always like amazing. I tried to change like a hundred times, believe me. I picked like a hundred different gimmicks. Yeah, and they were like, no, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I tried to change my hair, to change my gimmick, to change my gear. And they were like, no, Tay, don't, don't change. Just keep going. The opportunity is coming and the opportunity never came. So I was like, <laughs> not happy. And I told them, I was like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. I asked them, like, what about me? And they were like, well, there's people coming with more experience. Like they're rest they had like a wrestle background for like 10 years or whatever. And in my mind, I was like, well, if you keep signing people, who has like 10 years of experience or more experience and you don't use me, why are you signing people that don't come from pro wrestling? Am I wasting my time here? Mm -hmm. That was kind of my feeling. And I was like, well, what if, if I go like wrestle outside? And then when I come back, I will like have experience, right? That was my mindset. And I was like, no, it's just not working for me anymore here. Everything else was comfortable for me, like to have my money every week, you know? But at the same point, I'm not like that. I'm 24 years old. I'm not scared of work. I'm not scared of like learning and go around and try again. So I was like, no, not happy. I'm not happy. So it's not happening for me anymore. I mean, I've been watching all your live show matches on NXT and you were showing so much more moves and athleticism. So I understand like the frustration that you obviously have. Even for the live events, I always wanted to put something else. Like Lace Lane, she was the one that I always like had cool ideas. And she was like, yeah, let's do it. Like, let's use the chair. Let's do it. But like, they were kind of like, um... No, no. So I was not able to grow. I was not able to learn more, no. you know, to do different stuff. So was there some frustration among the NXT homegrown talents? I think that was just my feeling for a second. Okay. At one point they were like, you know, Tay, you were amazing. It's not about you, but like people have so much experience. So I was like, well, why are you finding more people that don't have experience if you're not going to use them? Like, that was the feeling for a second. But, like, after that, they was like, it's not about it. They just don't want to use me. Mm -hmm. Because when I, I think about, it, like, everyone that came before, they were homegrown. But we didn't have so many girls from pro wrestling yeah. Uh, background. Yeah. So it's, that was kind of tricky for me and mm -hmm. a bad feeling. Every time that bad feelings come, you know, like all the negative negativity mm -hmm. comes like to my mind. I'm trying to think like, oh no, forget about it. You know, you yeah. need to be grateful. Like all the opportunity, you learn like English. You are, you are learning English because I don't speak English very well, but like I'm learning English, I'm learn, learning Spanish. I'm grateful, you know, I'm not mm. gonna be like upset, frustrated anymore. I just yeah. want to remember WWE as like an amazing opportunity of my life. So you know what people were super excited about though? When you came back with the whole released gimmick. Oh my God. I oh my loved God. it. After a couple of weeks that I had the conversations and I told them that I was not happy there anymore and everything, uh, 
I got a couple weeks away. And I came back and I had not another conversation and we were okay. We were like, okay, I'm going to try one more time. Uh, opportunity is going to come. And they told me like, oh, we're going to be laughing about this situation in the future and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, you know, I was feeling good. And the same day, uh, they started to put everything on social media that I got released. So I was like, oh, I don't get it. Why they're putting you know, on yeah. social media that I'm released if I'm already okay with you guys. And they're like, oh, don't worry. It's just someone that, you know, putting yeah. that on social media. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And I was thinking like, well, if people were saying that, why not? You know, let's try to use and make a star line. <laughs> I want to change. They keep saying no, maybe not at the time. And I'm not gonna ask, so I didn't ask. Oh, wow. Yeah, I made my t-shirt. Of course, I didn't do that on TV, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm professional enough to know <laughs> that I can do that type kind of stuff on yeah. TV or whatever. But like live events, they're made to try new stuff, mm -hmm. new moves, new character. So I didn't ask. I just showed up uh, with a t-shirt. Before I um, I did my entrance, I told the producer, I'm like, hey, I'm using this t-shirt. Is that a problem? I didn't ask like before. Mm -hmm. So they had time to think and say no. <laughs> So in the, I was ready to go and I was like, hey, is that a problem? If I use this t-shirt, I had my own t-shirt just in case they say, no. yeah. they, you know, they say no. But they're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, if someone got mad, you can say that was my choice. It's just something that I want to try. And the producer was like, okay, it's on you. I'm like, yeah, it is on me. Of course. They didn't like it, so oh. I was not able to use it anymore. <laughs> oh no! It was so amazing with the shackle and everything. I need to try something. If you guys are not using me, like I need to change. So the idea for the release that was not just to you know try to piss people off or whatever. <laughs> so I put everything on paper and I showed them my idea. Of course, at first was like, oh my gosh, she's coming with a T-shirt saying release. But then I had the backstory. I was like, well, I'm trying to say that I'm released from who I was before. And then I will be able like, to show my new character. So if you watch the match, you can see like I'm completely different in the ring when I use my t-shirt. I was like more serious and not making fun and not being sexy. I was trying to do something else. It was not just to try like, you know, ha, ah, release. No, yeah. I had a backstory. I was planning, I was writing, put everything on paper. I had like everything planned, you know? You know, hearing your story, like I'm, I'm really sad that we didn't get to see your full potential. Like, are there other women in NXT that we as a fan can't see their potential because they're not given the opportunity? Honestly, I feel like uh, I'm so happy they're giving her TV time, finally, and putting her on, on Starline. Um, Raquel Gonzalez. Oh my, she's so good. She's amazing. Yeah. I'm telling you, she can do like big things. Like oh. she would be big. If they use her like the right way, if they give her opportunity, she, she would be like a freaking star. She can make everyone look good and she can look good. She's amazing. I love that. She's love amazing. That. So how did it feel finally getting that call that you are released? I was not expecting at all. When I talked to them a couple months ago, they told me like, uh, we are not letting you go. And I was like, okay. So I changed my mindset. I was like, well, I need to work with that. If I'm not going, I need to find a way to be happy here. Mm -hmm. I would try a lot, but like, I need to find a way. I can't be here and not be happy for two more years. I talked to them, we had a conversation and we we're fine, you know? We were okay. I was training. I was doing live events. Everything was back to normal. When I got the call, I was like, <laughs> not gonna lie. What a bad moment mm -hmm. for everyone, right? Not just for me. I was feeling so bad, so bad. I got the call, I was by myself at home. And I was just crying. Like, I remember when he called me, I was like, is it what I'm thinking? It's like, yeah. And I just start crying. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, let you digest that. And I was just like crying. I was not able to talk in the phone. I was like waiting for my husband and I told my husband and I was like really feeling bad for a couple of days. But after that, I was happy because like 
of course that was not the the right time for mm-hmm. me because I was not expecting uh, that was in the middle of the pandemic. You know, I'm not able to do anything right now. Yeah. So I'm getting kind of crazy because I'm at home doing nothing. Why did you then give me my release like before, like a couple months before? Then I would be able to do something. And all the bad feelings started to come. And I was like, no, you know, I need to understand. And it's a business and whatever. I'll be okay. And I just changed the mindset again. No, I'm grateful. It's okay. That was <laughs> a great opportunity. Now... Let's go. There's a fire under you. And I think this oh, is a yeah. chance for us to see the full potential. Yes. Yes. That's why I'm so excited. I'm telling you, I keep calling like a couple friends that I made like in wrestling. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. It's kind of hard. I'm not going to lie because I don't know much about like indies, about like um, another companies. I don't know much. It's kind of new for me, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. I know I can learn and that's excited. It's like, oh my God, I'll be able like to put a match and do what I need to do to <laughs> learn from like new people. And you know, it's just like too excited. I want to travel and oh my God, can be here talking for the whole day. <laughs> so you are staying in the pro wrestling industry. Oh, hell yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> for sure. It's no chance that I'm going back to Brazil and that. forgetting about wrestling. No, <laughs> I love talent, right? It's something that I need to have in my life. Yeah, It's a big talent for me now. So people were like texting me and tagging me like on Twitter, asking me about my visa. When you sign a contract, you have a WWE visa, right? But then a couple months ago, I did my own visa. Okay, cool. Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah. So I will not have problems to stay oh, and amazing. to work because that that was one of like the things that I was worried about because like with WWE contract if they they release you you have 30 days to go back to your country and I always you know think about that and mm-hmm. I was like oh uh, what if I do my own visa <laughs> that's the way to go so I'm okay I have my visa I will be here and that would be in the business for sure. Ah, I'm so glad because I, I also had to get a visa to work in America. So I'm oh, so yeah. glad that it all worked yeah, out for you. you know what I'm talking about. Oh, totally. It's a disaster. I'm so glad that that's yeah. gone. So outside of WWE, who are like three people that you're eyeing to get in the ring with? Oh my God, don't ask me that question. <laughs> my dream match mm-hmm. will always and forever be Satomura, Meiko. Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> oh my god. I met her, right? In WB. Mm-hmm. It's... Oh my god. <laughs> I really need to wrestle her one day. She was helping me in the ring in WB. And I was just in love. I was like, oh my god, I really need to wrestle her. I guess you'll be also flying out to Japan soon then. <laughs> oh my god, that's my biggest dream. I really hope it happens, honestly. <laughs> That's one of my biggest dreams since judo. I remember every time like um, the team Brazil was going to to Japan or I was like, you know, having opportunity to go to Japan, I, I got hurt in judo mm. like two times and I was not able to go there. So it's a dream. When the quarantine's done, you'll be heading to Japan. I'm excited about that. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I don't know like many people from the engines or from other companies like it's gonna be kind of a challenge but let's do it i just want to let you know that when i posted that i'll be interviewing you so many brazilian fans and latinx community they came out and they're like telling me that they are so proud of what you did how you represented them so like i just want to send you that there's so much people that's behind you and so proud of you loving you uh what's your message to them I don't know, I'm just like grateful. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's like, um, I feel like my heart that I was born to represent my country and to represent my people. Like, I don't know where, I don't know how, but somehow I will represent them. In judo, in jiu-jitsu, in pro wrestling, I, I don't know, I don't care, but like, I will always do my best to represent my people, my country, and all the Latin America. Like, it's just something that really, you know I love that I love that it's hard but I, I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, all the support all the love like you guys are amazing um, and thank you 
I have nothing else to say, just thank you. E eu tô aqui. Eu tô representando todos vocês. How can fans keep getting updated by you? Now I have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's under Ty Conti. My Instagram is Ty Conti underscore. And my Twitter didn't change yet, so... Got it, got I can it. say it. Well, I'm so excited for the next coming of Ty Conti. And thank you so much for this interview. Thank you, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>